this is one of the hardest skills to learn in ophthalmology. But after watching this video, I promise you you're going to master your fundus exam much faster than anyone else. Hello and welcome back to learnabouteyes.com. In this video, I'm going to give you all the tips you need to quickly perfect your slit lamp fundus exam. The slit lamp exam is one of the most important skills of an ophthalmologist and you will start learning it in your first week of training. While most residents find it pretty easy to learn the anterior segment examination, almost all of them struggle with the fundus exam. This is especially true for the fundus exam in an undilated patient or a non-compliant patient. But please don't get discouraged. This is one of the hardest skills to learn in ophthalmology. And all of your experienced colleagues, they can't really help you because they do everything automatically without even thinking about it. But after watching this video, I promise you, you're going to master your fundus exam much faster than anyone else. Here's what makes this skill so difficult. First of all, everything you see is upside down. Second of all, you only see a tiny portion of the retina at once and have to put the whole image together in your head. To make matters worse, you have to constantly align three moving parts, the patient's eye, your indirect lens, and your slit lamp. And whenever you move one of them, the image you see changes in a counterintuitive way. But I'm going to show you how to control each of these moving parts. Let's start with the patient's eye. If your patient looks to his right, it looks to you as if you were moving to the right part of your image, in this case, more temporally. If the patient starts looking to the left, you start to see the left part of the retina, or in this example, more nasally. Now let's have a look at the lens. This is the part all the residents struggle with because it's very counterintuitive. Remember that the image you see through your lens is completely upside down. So left is right and up is down. If you move your lens to the right, it looks to you as if you were moving to the left side of your image. Move your lens to the left and you can see the right part of the retina. Of course, the same applies to vertical movements as well. You move your lens down, your image moves up. You move your lens up, your image moves down. Moving diagonally can be especially confusing in the beginning, as you can probably imagine by now. So maybe pause and rewind the video here and make sure you completely understand the movement to a point where you can replicate it in your head. Now let's go to our last moving part, the slit lamp. This one's much more intuitive. Move your slit lamp to the right to see more of the right part of your image. Move it to the left to see more of the left part of your image. This is pretty straightforward and most people don't struggle with it too long. So now that you understand what each of these moving parts does, let's learn how to look around the eye to find the parts of the retina that you're interested in. First, let's start with how to set everything up. Have the patient put the head on the chin rest, set the slit lamp magnification to 10. If you have a stereo variator, set it to narrow and put the tower one increment to the left or to the right. If you don't have one, put the tower in the middle. Having a stereo variator actually makes it a lot easier for beginners. If you want to learn more about that amazing tool, go watch my last video. Set your light beam to about 5 mm high and 2 mm wide. Have the patient use the eye that is not being examined to look at your ear. This turns the eye inward, so the first thing you see is the optic disc. Center the light beam in the middle of the pupil and pull back the slit lamp in a straight line. Now most experienced examinators will put the lens in front of the eye and then pull the slit lamp directly into focus. This can be super confusing for beginners, so I recommend this. Pull the slit lamp all the way back and put your lens between the slit lamp and the patient's eye. Now you can see the whole eye upside down. Try to move the lens until you see the red reflex, but don't move your slit lamp. Beware that everything you see is upside down, so this part can be a bit tricky. Once you have a good red reflex, move your slit lamp forward carefully until you have a sharp image of a retinal vessel. Then move the lens forward to increase the visible area of the retina. This of course will make your image blurry again. Now follow forward with the slit lamp until the retina is in focus again. Continue this until you have a nice, big, sharp image of the retina. If you're able to keep the slit lamp, the lens and the patient's pupil in a straight line and the patient is looking at your opposite ear, you should see the optic nerve. 
But what if you land somewhere else on the retina? Here are some tips on how to find the optic nerve. All retinal vessels are either coming from or going to the optic nerve. This means if you're using the junctions where the vessels branch off as arrows, they will always lead you to the optic nerve. Sounds super easy, right? Unfortunately, it's not. Because of all the moving parts and the upside down image, most beginning residents struggle to find the optic nerve. But after the following instruction, you should be able to find it faster and know exactly what to do. Let's say you're here and you want to find the optic disc. The vessels are telling you to go to the left and down. If you move your slit lamp to the left, you're going in the right direction. But after a while, you start to see less and less until your image is dark. This is because you've reached the pupil margin and the iris is blocking your view. So what can you do against that? Let's start over and do it correctly this time. So you're here, the vessels tell you to go to the left, you move your slit lamp to the left. But this time, stop when you get to the pupil margin. Now move your lens in the same direction as you've just moved your slit lamp. This feels completely wrong because it makes your image go back in the same direction that you just came from. But trust me, it's the right thing to do. After you've moved your lens as far as the pupil allowed you to, you can move your slit lamp again. We're definitely closer to the optic nerve now, but not completely there yet. So we need to move the lens once again. And once again, it takes us back in the wrong direction, but we keep doing it anyway. Because now, if we move the slit lamp again, we can finally see the optic nerve, but it's only visible in the lower left corner. So what do we do? We first move the lens and then move the slit lamp. And there we have it, our optic nerve, but it's not perfectly centered yet. The vessels tell us to go down, so that's what we do. I can't show you here because my animation is only two dimensional, but vertical movements work just the same way as horizontal movements. So move your slit lamp down, then move your lens down until the optic nerve is perfectly centered. And there you have it. Now you know exactly what to do to find the optic nerve every time. Of course, with experience, you're gonna learn how to move the slit lamp and the lens at the same time to find the optic nerve much faster. Now all you need to do is keep these animations in mind while you're examining your patient and practice, practice, practice. I'm going to make a little video about how to make your own practice eye out of items that you can find in any eye clinic and link it in the description down below. Please tell me in the comments down below how your experience was when you first learned the slip lamp fundus exam and maybe give some tips of your own. So thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.